Hi, I'm Tanya. I'm a PhD student at Rothamsted Research, and I've spent the last three or so years of my life studying fungi. Now, normally I get some concerned looks when I tell people this, but hopefully in the next three minutes, I'll be able to convince you that the last three years was worth it. So what are fungi? Well, you might recognise them as the toadstools that you see when you're out walking, the mushrooms that you buy from the supermarket, or the mould growing on that loaf of bread that you'd just forgotten about. But in fact, fungi are actually incredibly diverse, and they make up their own kingdom of life, which completely separates them from other complex organisms, like plants and animals. But more importantly for me, fungi are partially responsible for three of my favourite things. Cheese, beer and wine. Some fungi are good, like the mushrooms from the supermarket. Other fungi are bad, like the pathogenic fungi that I study. Pathogenic fungi are able to infect plants, and they can destroy up to 30% of crop products every year. Now this is a massive global problem, considering that our population is rapidly growing, so we have many more people to feed. I study take-all disease. Now this is a crop disease caused by a specific fungal pathogen called Guamanomyces triticae, or GT for short. So GT lives in the soil and it stops wheat roots from being able to take up water and nutrients from the soil that are needed for growth. So here is a bag of grain taken from a healthy wheat field and here is a bag of grain taken from the same number of plants but in a field that's been infected with take-all. So hopefully you can see where take-all got its name from. One solution to the problem of take-all may actually be a close relative of GT that we call GH. If GH is present in the same field where GT is present, we get less take-all disease. Now my job was to find out how GH does this and whether it could be used as an eco-friendly control mechanism to tackle take-all disease. So the first thing that I needed to do was figure out whether GH directly attacks GT, but I didn't find any evidence of this, which told me that something must be going on in the plant. So I used different microscopy techniques to look at what happens when GH is inside the plant. And I found that after GH enters the plant, the plant root produces physical barriers made up of plant polymers called lignins. Now these lignins could act as a physical barricade against future GT infection. So amazingly, I found that GH can actually reduce take-all levels by up to 100%, but only when it's added to the soil before GT. So it seems that when GH enters the plant, it sets off alarm bells, telling the plant's immune system to increase defences and prepare for attack. So for example, by producing this lignin barricade. So you can think of this like a plant vaccination. The plant is now better prepared to defend itself against take-all disease if it infects in the future. So using what we've learned, we're now able to think about how we can use GH to turn this infected grain into this healthy grain. <laughs> 